All right. So let's look at a C program. C program, and we'll try to, uh, you know, dissect it, and we will try to uh, look at the different, uh, you know, parts to a simple C program first. All right. Uh, all of you can see my screen, right? All of you can see my screen. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Code here. All right. So you have already written this line when when you were doing your C program in the lab, and you wrote this, right? Just yes, tell sir. me if you have not written this. So all of you are familiar with this because you have already written a program. All right. Yes. So yes, sir. you know that. Yes. Okay. I'll just explain briefly then. Okay. So since you already know it, I'm just going to explain briefly. But for those those who don't know, let me just explain it once again to you. All right. So I'm going to just add a small extra bit here. Right. And let me just add this bit here. All right. So that's that's my first program in C. Okay, for this semester. Now, this is a very simple program. Okay, now I will explain each and every bits to it. Now, when we write this program, we have to save it in a file, right? And when you save it in a file, you probably give a name, name to this file, and then you use the extension C. Uh, before we actually start, uh, I would request all of you to mute your microphones because they're disturbances. Right, so Sankal, please, can you mute your microphone? Yes, sir. Sankal Pacharya, yeah, please mute your microphone so that it's easy for uh, all of us to hear. Thank you. All right. So you know that when we write a C program, you have to save the file in which you have written, right? And when you give a name to the file, you have to give an extension, and that extension is .c. I know everyone must have done this in the lab. Okay, now this is basically what is called as a source code. Okay, this is basically what is called as a source code. So when I execute this code, what will be my output? My output of this will be a very simple hello. That's going to be my output. That's it. This is going to be my output. Okay, now we'll look at this uh, example a little closely. Right, now the first thing is, we have not added any comments here. So we can actually write some comment. So if I include a line at the top saying, look at this, just look, look at the format. My first program. Okay, so I'm writing this line here. And then I close it again. So I start with a slash and star and star and a backslash. Okay. Now, this line that you see here will not be counted in your program. In fact, what exactly the meaning of this line is that this is just a simple note. This is not a part of your program. So when this code is going to be compiled, this part will be left out. But why do we need to write this? So we need to write this because if you are going into industries and if you're going to write some code, you have to write a lot of comments. So these are called as comments okay what is the importance of comments the importance of comment is that it will give you a space in which you can write some information about the code for example if you have written a code and if some other person is actually going to look at it then if you have a comment you can write some information about what you have done so you can also mention who has written this file when was this file changed what does what does this program do so this comment can be written anywhere in the program. OK, so you can actually write a comment here, like printing hello. Right. So this is a comment. All right. This will not be taken into consideration when the program is going to be compiled. Obviously, this is not uh, very difficult to understand. And a lot of people uh, don't use comments, seeing that there's nothing, this is not a part of programming. But yes, it's important to understand that comments are very important when you consider yourself as a software engineer because you have to write a lot of comments when you go to, you know, when you are in the industry and you are coding. Okay, this is simple. So this is a comment. 
now the next part which becomes very interesting and where you know things start getting interesting and we start looking into a c program is basically the hash include here you see here hash include okay now you must have noticed that this line starts with a hash sign all right which is followed by the word include now in c this hash include forms a pre processor directive what did i just say pre processor directive please if you are uh, listening to me and if you can see the board i hope you have a pen and paper with you so that you can take some notes also so right now what is this pre processor directive remember the other day when i taught you the what are the different components of a c program right what are the different components which actually help you in writing and executing your program then we had something called as pre processor there do you all remember or you have forgotten do you remember yes, right sir. yes sir yes no yes sir yes sir okay. yes sir so yes sir. yes sir yes sir okay brilliant okay all of you remember pre processor okay brilliant so now let me tell you what exactly happens here so when you write any line with a hash symbol like here i have written hash include right this forms a pre processor directive that means what is the directive this line tells the c pre processor now it's that component it's telling the c pre processor to look for a file and place the contents of that file in the location where the hash include directive indicates okay so this hash include so this is a symbol or this is an instruction for the pre processor this line tells that you know include look for the file which file you need to look for this is the file that you look you need to look for okay and place the contents of the file in the location where this is asking you to include okay now what the what is the pre processor it's nothing but a simple program it's an additional program that does some preparation for the c compiler before your compilation starts all right now you see there is a file name given here because there is a name sir sir along with an sir yes. is this like uh, import java.util in uh, java yes 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 it's like an import it's like an import okay so in java you don't write include but you write import all right fine so now yeah where where was i okay so you see that there is a file name which is given here right so you may guess that the file that that hash include is asking right for is called as stdio.h so stdio is .h is that file which the hash include directive is asking for right now the important thing here is if you look at this file it is stdio.h if you break it up it means standard input output so this is called as a standard input output header file okay now what exactly does this file contain it contains lots of prototypes functions and different kinds of code and instructions to perform input output activities for c program when i say input output activities for c program what does it mean now see this computer is a machine right here is a machine so here is a computer so you have a keyboard so if this is a keyboard right and this is your monitor and you know that there is a cpu all of you know this right so the cpu is, the keyboard is connected to the cpu and the cpu is connected to the monitor and all the processing is happening here so in a c program the code is written here right so when you say i want to print hello onto the screen right so basically the instructions are going from this central processing unit all the way to the monitor so that means there is some data which is being transferred between the cpu and the monitor now along with the data there is some logic also for example some if the data is sent there is a communication happening between the two different hardwares one is your cpu the other one is your monitor both are different hardwares right so 
your piece of code has to talk to the hardware that means it has to communicate with the hardware and say look here is the data please display it on your uh, you know on your screen so there has to be communication between different hardwares so obviously your c program is a software so it is a software and it is written inside and it is executing in the ram but other than your you know uh, the program execution it has to also perform lot of activities like talking to the hardware taking the data all the way to this machine and then asking the monitor to display it onto the screen so this communication between a software so here is your c program that is a software and here is a hardware there is a communication which has to happen between them okay now all the functions and all the methods and all the different code for this communication between your program and the input and the output device so output device is your monitor and input device is your keyboard for example if you accept a character from the keyboard and take the character into your program and from the program you want to output that onto the screen then the communication is hap happening from an input device to your program which is a software and then output device which is a hardware so it is hardware software hardware so there needs to be a lot of other kinds of program for this communication now that you are not writing right you are just saying intermediate programs okay all these pieces of code which is actually doing so much of work it is actually taking the data from the input device talking to your hardware bringing it all the way to the software where it's getting processed and from your code it is again being sent to your monitor which is another output device so there are a lot of functionalities which are hidden which you don't have to worry about it all you need to do is just say print and it will do it but the code for all this is written inside this file called as stdio.h right so if you're going to write this function some instruction here saying print then all the logic for this particular you know steps which i told you communicate with the input device output device all that instruction on that logic is already written inside stdio.h so if you want to use this print functionality you have to include this file okay so you have to work with lots of header file okay these are called as header files so everybody is okay with this there are so many other header files that you will be working with there is one stdlib.h string.h then you have math.h so we will look at the different header files okay so if, is everybody clear with what i told you right now so everybody understood what's a header file and why do we write stdi.h and what is the function of hash in right away and if you have understood then you can say yes sir okay we can continue yes sir Yes sir. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Fine, yes, fine, sir. fine, fine. Thank, thank you, thank you. So let's continue. So now I'm going to tell you something very important. Probably I, I'm not sure whether you know it or not. Let me ask you first. Okay. Now, if you look at the first line here, if you look at the first line here, let me just remove all of this, all of this. So here is your hash, and here. Okay. All right. So here we go. Look at this line. Look at this line. Now, in this line, you have this symbol. They are called as angle bracket. Okay. And anybody knows what these angle bracket do here? Anybody? Let me see how well you know C plus plus. Even you have used this in C plus plus, and you have used it in to write programs in C also. So anyone? Let's see who is going to answer this. what is the use of this angle bracket i'll wait for 5 seconds no one okay have you ever <laughs> seen that sometimes you write yes yes tell me someone is there with an answer sir i thought so basically it's a significant sign which shows that the particular data will going to be stored in standard input output maybe kind of okay 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 a good so, guess yes 
so so it yes, is so used for a header file or the it is used for header file or predefined it is specifically used for no. header header file no 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 not quite somebody is uh, sending me chat we can use double slash uh, okay no that's for some other thing i think so to pass in values okay vivek is there we have to pass values so let me explain it to you i think uh, you guys need to know that so sometimes sometimes we write hash include with this and many times have you seen it's also written something uh, sorry it's also written with double quotes have you seen that has anyone seen that sometimes it's written dot h here with dot h file in double quotes sometimes it is written in angle brackets has anybody noticed that noticed that uh, uh, double quotes any time no ha huh, sir okay fine so let me just explain when you have this symbol that is the angle brackets right the yeah the angle brackets basically tell the c pre processor to look for stdio.h in a directory which is other than the directory in which you are saving your file what means is that if you have save suppose this name of this file is test.c right and suppose you are storing this in c drive all right sorry it's not the way this is how it's written it's c drive and you're storing it in suppose uh, there is a folder called code okay suppose this is the folder that you have made and all your .c files you are storing it or saving it in this file so when you put this angle bracket what actually these angle brackets do is they ask the c process c pre processor to look for a header file look for this file in a directory other than the current one so other than this did you understand this this angle bracket will tell not to look inside this file inside this folder for this stdio.h look in other directories look don't look inside the code directory you can look inside c you can look inside other directories you can look inside all the other directories except this directory that means this is the place where you are storing your c.c files so this angle bracket tells the preprocessor to look beyond this folder no not inside this folder this is called as your local directory did you understand this so this is called as your current directory also current c u r r e n t current directory okay current directory which means that this is the directory you are using to save this file okay so when you use this angle bracket you are telling the preprocessor to look for other directories look for this file in other directories not the current directory okay so if you want to uh, if, if you want the c processor to look look for this file inside the current directory first before looking elsewhere then you can replace this with a double quote did you understand this yes sir anyone has a doubt please yes. ask me oh, did you understand all of you sir okay. double quotes will remember this is a question which will come in uh, yes? sir actually sir the double quotes sir the sir the, the double quotes will look at the particular header file the double quote will look start looking inside your current directory first and then it will go and look at all the other directories but if you don't use a double quote and if you just use an angle bracket then it will not look for this file in the current directory it will look for it will start looking at other directories not the current directory okay okay sir thank you thank you sir all right so so this is a small simple uh, you know difference between what does the angle bracket do and what does a double quote do many people don't know but please remember this because in many interviews sorry i still didn't yes. understand it. you did not understand okay fine let me explain it again 
So this stdio.h file is present somewhere in your computer. Okay, because where is it present? Normally it is present inside the compiler. So when you install the folder, when you install the software, if you install the uh, compiler, the C, C uh, software, right? Then what happens? First thing that will happen is that there will be a directory where your suppose dev C is there, right? So suppose you have created dev C. So inside this, there will be a lot of directories and the installation will happen there. Did you understand this much? Yes, sir. Yes, so, yeah, okay. Second, now when you create your C program, so suppose you have created a folder, like what is the folder? So the folder is say, uh, what is the folder? So the folder is like my files, okay, my files. And inside that you are saving all the files. So that means if you have created three programs, I'm saying 1.c, 2.c, 3.c, all your C programs are inside this folder, my files. All right. So when you write this hash include with an angle bracket, what happens is this stdio.h, it will, the preprocessor will start looking for this file in your machine, in your computer. So what it will do is, if it is an angled bracket, it will not look for the file inside your directory. Okay, so the angle, so basically when you use angle bracket, it will skip this my files directory and it will look at all the other directories which are there in the C folder. It will skip looking for this file in your directory. This directory that where you are saving your C programs are called as current directory. So in the current directory, it will stop. It will not look for this hash include in that current directory. But if you actually use this double quotes, then the searching for this file, stdio.h, will start from your current directory. It will first look inside your current directory. If it doesn't find, then it will go beyond your current directory and start looking at all the other directories. So why do so we want you to skip that? Well, why do you want to skip? Because most of the time, you want to separate your program and you you basically the place where, suppose you have installing Photoshop or if you're installing a software, so when you are actually working on some application, you don't save those application files inside the uh, insta installed folder, right? You will save it, you will create your own folder, you will give your own name, and then you will write your own files there. Isn't it? Yes. Right. So, so most of the time, we, in order to manage our files, we don't use the installed folder to save our files. We save it in our own directory. We give, they can be more than when you're making big applications, when you're making a huge uh, software, then you have to have your own folder structure. So if you put that inside your uh, installed file, there'll be a lot of confusion. Okay, so you don't have to really worry too much about this, uh, you know, double quotes and this angle bracket. I just told you the difference so that you remember it. Because in a lot of technical interviews, in your job, placement interviews they ask you this what is the difference between writing double quotes versus using angle bracket so that's all okay you don't really need to worry about it too much okay fine so we will move ahead and we will look at this now now what is this this is a very special function in c what is a function function is something which does some work right function is basically when i say uh, you look around uh, for a, you know, just like a literal meaning of function means something where something is happening, some process is happening. Function is somewhere where something is happening, some processes are taking place, right? So main is a very special function in C. Every program must have a main method and every C program can have only one main method. Remember that. This is like the entry to your house, right? Most of the houses that you see, suppose you make a house, right? And you make a gate around, you make a boundary around your house. 
So normally what you do is there will be only one gate from where you can enter. So this gate is like a function. Okay. So you can have only one entry point inside a program. If you have multiple gates, then the whole point of having this boundary wall is gone. Right. You should have only one entry point. So your main function, okay, you can write it anywhere you want in your C program. Right. So I have written it on the top, but I can write this main function down also with a lot of other codes here. But wherever you write the main function, right? This you can write some other functions also in this. This is just an example where we have written the main function. So your C program will consist of multiple functions, different functions, but you must have the main function. And no matter how many functions you write, the first function which will get executed will be your main function. So main function is basically your entry point to your program. Okay, every program will start from the main function. Is that is that okay? Right now inside this main function, you see that there is a printf. So this is also a function. You know, so in this program, how many functions are there? Two. One is the main function, and the second function that we see here is a printf function. Look at these brackets here. Look at these brackets. These brackets and these brackets are the same. So we have two functions here. One is the main function and one is the printf function. Okay. Now, one more important thing about the main function is that the execution of every C program starts from the main and ends at the main. All right. So when you start the program, it will start from here. And when you end the program, it will end here. Right now, we don't have too many functions. Our code is very simple. But when we actually start doing it, then you will remember uh, what I what you you kind of correlate to what I'm saying. Now, what we have uh, used here is a slash n. Okay. Now, this what I have written inside this function. So I have a print f, which is a name of a function. The code, the implementation, or the logic of what this function is going to do is written inside this file stdio.h. That's because we wanted to use printf. That's why we are including this file here. If we don't use printf, then there is no need to include this file. What your printf will do, it will display whatever you write inside this bracket to a monitor. All right. So if you look at printf, inside this, whatever I enter with, within this quotes, right, so is called as parameter. So if you enter, sorry, if you, let me write it down, parameter. So whatever you include inside these parentheses, inside these brackets, they are called as parameter. So printf is a function which is accepting the string as a parameter, right? So you have something called as hello. So hello will get printed. But what about this slash n? What does this slash n tell you? The slash n is a new line character. It is called as a new line character. What does this new line character do? Normally, when you write slash n, after printing hello, this entire line is left out. And after, if you suppose print another something else after that, if I do print f and I write hi, Right, then what's going to happen is high will get printed below hello. That means this entire line where the hello has been written will be skipped and this will get printed into the next line. All right, so if I don't have this slash n and I just write hello and hi, then the output will be hello, hi, something like this. In the same line, everything will start getting printed. So if I want to print in the next line, I need to use slash n. The slash n is called as new line character. Okay, so I think you must have already used it. So uh, you know exactly what to do. And then there is the last part here, which I have not written. I have to write return. Okay, I have to write return. Now, what is this return? What does this return do? What does this return do? Now, if you have a function, the function always returns something. Right. For example, uh, if you have a coffee vending machine, if that's a coffee vending machine has a function. So obviously something you need to in 
you know, insert into that machine, and after that, it gives you something as an output. So that output that you get from a function is called as something that you need to return. So in this case, because this function is there is a prototype of this function, so we will discuss all that later. But what I have said is main function returns something. What it returns, it just returns a flag. It returns zero, right? So sometimes what happens, uh, you know, this this is important. Why this is important? This indicates that if it returns zero, means that this function has executed properly. But if there are some errors during the running of this uh, function, during the running of the program, if there are some errors, then it will not return zero. It will return some other value. It could be one. This means that this function did not execute properly. Okay, so this value can be taken by the operating system, and the operating system can tell you that this particular program, when we executed onto the RAM, when we took it to the RAM, and when it ran, it did not run properly. So here is the error code which this program actually. So you can actually go and look into why this, what was the problem, uh, whether this function executed properly or not, or there was some error. So depending on this return type. You can figure out whether your program ran successfully in the RAM in the processor, or it returned some error. Okay, so did you all understand what I'm saying? Like, let me just ask you. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So you must yes, have sir. already done all of this. You must have already done all of this. So you know exactly what happens. Uh, you know what happens when you are actually compiling the code now. So you know that there is something called as a compiler. Yesterday, I also told you about the different types of languages, high level, low level, and all that stuff, right? So now uh, what we can do is we can start looking at data types. I told you about constants. I told you about uh, what is an expression, right? So if you write 2 plus 3 into 10, this is an expression, right? So expression is anything which involves operators so using operators you can write expressions so i had told you that right i also told you what are operators right operators are basically you know uh, symbols right like all these kind of symbols are called as operators we will look into these operators later on because there are some very specific operators that you need to know like for example boolean operators and bitwise operators but all of you are very familiar with these four operators right they are called as what operators arithmetic right so since your class uh, probably one or class two you know how to do addition subtraction multiplication division right and percentage and all these things you know it right so these are all your arithmetic operators Okay, so we will uh, look into the operator. So you know what are characters. Yesterday I told you, you know. So let me just uh, explain a few more things about, you know, C, right? What exactly is a function? So I think we can discuss functions in our later when we're doing, uh, you know, things more in details. But uh, how many of you are aware of functions and how to make function calls and all? I mean, is there anyone who doesn't know what is a function? Let me just ask you: Is there anyone who has not, who doesn't know what is a function? How does a function return? What is function call? What is function body? What is function prototype? Is there anyone who doesn't know? Please let me know. Yes, sir. Rohan, you don't know? Okay, fine. That's good. Only Rohan. Anyone else who doesn't know what's a function? Sir, I also okay. don't. Om Dube. Okay, fine. So you can, you also don't know. Okay, fine. Can you just, uh, all those, all those who don't know functions and uh, the different prototypes and all that, please, can you just write, sir, me, me, me in the chat box, okay? M mute your microphone and just write in the chat box. So I know exactly how many people actually do not know functions and all that. So I can explain it in a better way. Okay. Fine. So... Keep writing and let me know. Meanwhile, we will start understanding what data types are.
so yesterday i told you about variables and constants right do you remember yes sir yes sir right do you remember what i what i told you that okay or let's say right and uh, say price okay now yesterday i told you what are variables and what are constants all right so what are variables variables are the containers which will collect or keep your data right variables are containers which will keep your data and what is the data data are these what what are these these are constants so when i say age age is a container when i say gender gender is a container when i say price price is a container right so inside the age i can store 20 inside the gender i can store m inside this price i can store this all right now we have to learn one more additional thing which is connected to variables and constants now we have to also define what kind of container it is there what kind of container is there for example can you store uh, water in a cup can you store water in a cup yes sir yes sir uh, yes sir. Yes, sir. can you ca can you store milk in a cup yes sir yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. okay fine perfect can you when i come to your house suppose you invite me to your house and uh, you know you offer me tea right so are you going to give me tea in a glass cup which one of these cup 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 cup, cup. cup right but but the tea can go inside a glass also right you can keep the tea or pour the tea or uh you can collect the tea in a cup in a glass also but why are you not going to give me the tea in the glass it is more appropriate sir to serve the it's more appropriate cup. it's more appropriate okay good now along with tea you're giving me biscuits also right you're giving me biscuits so when i talk about now i ask you for water so water will you give me in a cup or a glass glass a glass glass, glass. sir perfect so you're going to give me tea in a cup water in a glass and you're going to give me snacks so you're giving me some biscuits okay sorry so let's say biscuits so biscuits you're going to give me in a glass or a cup no one plate sir plate you no not you say you say that you're not going to give you're not going to give me biscuits is it sir just have tea and water and go don't have biscuits <laughs> <laughs> so obviously you are not going to give me biscuits in a glass you're not going to give me biscuits in a cup but you're going to give me biscuits in a plate agree all of you yes, yes sir. sir yes sir then you say sir sir why yes, don't you have lunch now you're going to be very generous okay you say like sir sirf chai ke liye aaye the now i'm going to ask sir like sir please have lunch with us i will be like okay you're going to offer me lunch so i will have no problem so now let's talk about lunch so when you're going to give me lunch you have made biryani okay you've made biryani for lunch and like okay i love biryani so i said yeah i'll have so now when you offer me lunch are you going to give me in the same plate as biscuits No sir. No sir. No sir. No sir. No, sir. Yes, sir. sir. Then what are, then what are you going to give it to? You are going to give me this in a big plate, right? Yes, yes. sir. Yes, yes sir. Yes sir. Yes sir. Yes. So we can call it thali, right? T H A L I thali, which is nothing but a big plate, right? So now, if you look at this example, which we have just, uh, you know, uh, please mute your microphones. Thank you. Okay. so if you look at this example that we've just created now you can see that water is some kind of data it's a liquid data right but the appropriate container is a glass so tea is also a data 
right? But an appropriate container is a cup. Biscuit is also some kind of data, but the appropriate container is a plate. Lunch is some kind of data, and the appropriate container is a big plate. So if you look at these, these are nothing but types of container. Are you able to uh, relate to this? So what is a yes, glass? Sir. What is a cup? What is a plate? Yes, what is a big plate? These are all different types of containers, right? I think everyone should be clear with what I'm saying here, right? So remember one thing, constants are like your data. Variables are like the container for which you have given a name. For example, you can say like for tea, Acha sir ko wo achche wale, matlab blue color wale tea, uh, tea cup mein do, right? Wo jo humne corel ka laya hai, us mein do. So basically what we are saying is that we are giving a name to each of these containers. What are those names? Names are gender, price, age, variables, right? But along with this, we also have something which is the type of container. What is the type of container? Okay. So if you look at this glass cup, plate, big plate, these are all different types of container. Okay. So. In order to understand data types, what are data types? So, for example, let's say that we have age here. Age is a number. Now, in order to give T, we have a type of container. What is a type of container? Cup and saucer, right? But if you are dealing with numbers like this, 20, and I have given it a variable name, that is, this is the name of the container, but I need to know what is the type of that container. Okay, so what kind of container is this? What type of container is this? Okay, I've given a name to that container as age, but I also need to define the type of this container, right? So there are four different types of container in C. Okay, one is called as an int. Now, this is a container which will store integer values. So this is a container which will be used to store integer values, right? Now, this is gender, which is the name of my container. But what is the type of this container? This is a character, char. OK, so the name of this container is char. Now, this one, third one, what is this? This is a different type of data. So you need to have a specific type of container to store this. So what is that type of container? We can say float. Okay, float. So this is another type of container. Now you can have container of different sizes also. So when you look at integer, what is the difference between an integer and a character and a float? It's the differences in the size and the type. Integer is going to store only integer values. So if you declare a variable and tell that that variable is of integer, that means you can only store those type of data which are integers into this variable. Are you able to understand? So 20. So in order to store this number 20, I can I need a container. Okay, this container, look at the size, it's appropriate. That means 20 fits perfectly into this container. Now, gender, which is a char. Right? Char means it is smaller than integer, right? Because I just need a small container where M can fit in. So this is a cap. Now, if you look at floating uh, float, which is price, the price is a little huge, right? It's for a bada because you need a bigger size to fit this. So if you look at these different data types, these are called as data types. So these data types are the type of containers in which you are going to put the data. Variables are the name of those containers. Now, why do we need a name? The problem why we need a name is it can happen that I have come to your house, you know, my wife has come to your house and my daughter has also come to a house, come to your house. So you are going to give me three cups of tea, right? So I have cup one, cup two, cup three, right? So all these three different cups will have tea, but they need to be differentiated. You know, they need to be differentiated amongst themselves. That means, sir, ye aapki, uh, this is your cup of tea. Sir, ye aapke beti ki, uh, you know, your daughter's tea, and this is your wife's tea, sir. 
so what you have done is you have differentiated these three so you can actually give a name now you know your house you are like so uh, you know you have got a mechanism if you go basically to uh, if you go to some restaurants and all what they do is when they are giving you a parcel when they giving you a drink they will add your order number or they will add your identification there right that means although there are three cups of coke but each one of them will have an id the order id or they will be differentiated they will mark something on the top they will write okay what's your name sir manas so manas this is manas this is somebody else this is somebody else so what you are doing is you are just differentiating these three different containers so variables are used to differentiate because in a program i can have more than one person's age so if i am taking more than one person's age i will not be able to differentiate between them so in order to differentiate i will need a variable so i can give age 1 age 2 age 3 age 4 and then store different values inside that container but what is the type of container that is defined by data types okay so each of these data types has got different sizes so in c we basically have four data types that we need to remember and then there are some variations of that four so what you need to remember is that char is one data type int is another data type float is another data type and double okay you need to remember i'll tell you what are the differences between that between these four different data types okay now there are lot of there are yesterday remember i had told you about some uh, something called as keywords right i told you something about keywords yes, now sir. there are yes sir many now yes sir the these these four these four that you see here are keywords okay which means that you cannot use these four to write variable names that means i i can't say int int right is equal to 5 because this is a keyword i can't use keyword in order to declare a variable so i can say int age i can say int a1 is equal to 10 i can write anything here but i can't use these because they are keywords so we have already seen four keywords as of right as of now okay so that's the reason why there are some keywords which are basically uh, used now let's look at char char is a data type which represents a container which can hold a single character of the character set which is used by your computer for example a is a character this is also a character what about this is this a character or it is not a character no not sir. a character absolutely very good A seven is not a character. What is seven? Integer. Seven. Seven is an integer. Very integer, good. Sir. But seven. Seven is a number. Right. Seven is a number which is a type integer. So seven is a number which is of type integer. Seven point five is also a number, but it is of type float. Are you able to understand? A is a character. This small a is also a character. Seven is a number which is of type integer. Seven point five is also a number, but it is of type floating point. Did you understand this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, so sir. I, I think uh, we can uh, stop today, and uh, tomorrow uh, we will continue with this, and I will uh, get into the details of uh, different uh, characters. So you know what is uh, char? Char char are all these characters A B C D. right integers are all numbers like 7 8 9 10 20 21 22, 22 all those are numbers uh, integers float a floating point that means all the numbers which are decimal right floats are basically you know a floating point number contains a decimal point for example 7.01 this is a decimal right even minus 3.5 what is this this is also a float because what the minus sign is also a number right you represent a number as positive or negative if you don't write any sign then what it signifies it signifies it's positive 
but if it's a negative then you must write a uh, minus here a floating point number is also called real number you must have studied that in your maths right so what are real numbers so real numbers floating point numbers are the same okay now yes uh, i will tell you something about uh, what is the difference between uh, floating point and double right now this floating point number can also be represented as double okay that means floating point and double are almost the same but there is one difference the difference between a double and the floating point is that the floating point the size of this container is half of the size of double okay which means that if you have a floating point small number if you have a small number which is a real number which you can put it inside the float because the float is a container which can store floating point numbers but there is a size of this container but if suppose your floating point number becomes big huge then if it doesn't fit into this float then you can use double which is basically two times of this float so if there's a large number you can put it inside a double so both the float and the double are used to store your real numbers but if you have a large real number right then you have to store it in a double if you have a small real number you can store it in a float because the size of the container is what is the size of the container is so if the float is say 4 bits then 4 bytes this will be 8 bytes so it's a it's double did you understand this yes sir okay sir, yes, sir. so sir, just a sir, just a query sir sir yes. float mein to na bolo matlab point value jaise 4.2 4.3 aise matlab point pe hum store karte lekin to sir double pe to waisa nahi hota na is yes, basically see. store a integer number kyun to sir मतलब लेट सपोज अगर सर हम डबल पे स्टोर किए फ्लोट वैल्यू डबल स्टोर एन इंटीजर नंबर डबल आल्सो स्टोर्स अ रियल नंबर डबल आल्सो स्टोर्स अ रियल नंबर ओके डबल एंड फ्लोट बोथ स्टोर रियल नंबर्स रिमेंबर दैट इंटीजर स्टोर्स ओनली दोस नंबर्स व्हिच डू नॉट हैव पॉइंट्स व्हिच डू नॉट हैव डेसिमल दे आर दे आर नॉट फ्रैक्शंस दे आर होल नंबर्स लाइक 7 27 270 दे डोंट हैव एनी places of decimal so they are called as integers but real numbers real numbers are numbers which have decimal points right all the decimal points are stored in floats uh, basically if you have a real number a number consisting of decimal points then you can either store them in floats or double but the choice of which one to store where depends on the size of this if you have a very small number then you can store it in a float but if you the size is huge right then you can store it in a double so i'll i'll explain this uh, float and double again later on when we do uh, you know type casting right sir, but sir. remember remember yes so one doubt sir if the data contains both character as well as in then which data type is used a data uh, data contains both character and in okay give me an example give me an example of so, data which contains both character and int like uh, if we have to put our email id our email id contains both character as well as int then which so, data type can your your email id your email is id string. is a string yesterday do you remember i told you it's a array it's it's basically a combination a sequence of characters like if you have only characters means c characters means a characters means b but if you have c a b then this is not char this is a string did you understand this is not a character data this is a string so if you have c a b 1 0 at the rate gmail then this entire thing is a string it is not so strings are something different i'll tell you strings are different so strings are different from characters so you need to make strings you need to combine different characters and make a string so when we do arrays when we look into arrays then we will come to this but you if you have any combination of characters and numbers then that has to be a string it cannot be a 
you know integer it cannot be a character or it cannot be a float it cannot be a double okay sir okay yes sir so uh, we will we will stop today's class here okay